Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Margot Rollins, and I am the program coordinator for the Galbraith Wildlands Preserve, one of the preserves that is managed by Sonoma State University. And I work for the Center for Environmental Inquiry. Uh, first of all, I want to let you all make sure that you all know how to use Zoom, which I'm sure you do, because you do it all the time at school. And also, I want you to please rename yourself, particularly if you're a student as a child, just put your first name. So uh, I've muted you all and turned your video off. And it's important that you keep your video off and stay muted unless you're okay with being recorded because we are recording this and we hope to po post it on, on our website before very long. And because there are so many of us, please stay muted unless asked uh, otherwise. If you have any issues such as you can't hear us or you have some technical issues, please put it in the chat and we will work, work with that to, to get with you. If you have questions for Pat, for our speaker, just put them into the into this chat and we will relay them to him in the question and answer period. Okay, well, I love my job. I am so lucky to work for the Center for Environmental Inquiry because we are a group of people working for the university to bring students, faculty, and community together to help the environment. And you all are interested in that or you wouldn't be with us today. We want students of all ages to learn about and interact more with the natural world. We give them the skills they need to make a difference. And that's what's gonna to happen today. We're gonna to be turning education into action before your very eyes. And each of you is one of the students we're gonna work with and we will make a difference, but we all work together. Our leader today is Pat Stadile. And Pat is a middle school science teacher for Car in Carmel, California. And he is the author of the wildly popular book, Spiders in Your Neighborhood. He will tell us just about everything we need to know about spiders and the very important role they play in nature. When he is done, we hope you will have all lost your fear and be more and more in love with spiders than ever. Pat, take it away. Okay, thank you, Margo. Hi, everybody. And I'm glad to see all of you are in the right place today, spiders. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, wearing the latest fashionable spider clothing, you know, this beautiful spider here, spider necklace, and of course, this dashing spider hat, and you know, there's a lot of good spider gear out there that you ought to be wearing, okay? Well, let's get right to it. I'm going to give you a slideshow about spiders, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to go out and take some pictures and find some spiders, and then maybe post your images on uh, a Google Doc or something like that and uh, we can see what you find, okay? So let me get to the uh, PowerPoint here, and I'm glad to see, I wanna put a, do a little shout out to my friend Peyton, who is one of my students that is showing up today, and I appreciate that. So here we go. So this is the title of my show, Our Friendly Local Spider Phenomenon. Let's emphasize that word friendly, because spiders are nothing to be afraid of, my friends. And here are a couple of my students out there, and they're looking at this kind of spider. This is one of my favorites. This is the Argiope. And you know, unfortunately, this is the uh, average view of the public of spiders. It's amazing that this man that's 200 pounds is afraid of this thing that's probably only two ounces, but nevertheless, he is. And uh, let's get this right out of the way right now. The only uh, dangerous spider is the black widow around here. And it's easy to recognize the shiny black, the large abdomen, the long legs, and the red hourglass. And this is not an aggressive spider. It's not out there to get you. Uh, if you disturb it somehow, it'll try to run away. Um, you just uh, got to be alert. And if you see this spider, you just leave it alone. And I look for spiders all the time. I have hundreds and hundreds of students that go out and look for spiders. Nobody's ever been bitten by a black widow because we just uh, take some common sense precautions. So don't be afraid of black widows. Don't let one really fascinating species uh, make you scared of spiders, okay? And uh, the other one I wanted, myth I wanted to spell of is there's no brown recluse spider in California. The brown recluse lives in the Midwest. That's a common urban myth that we can dispel right away, okay? All right, so, you know, I hate to admit this, but as a young science teacher, you know, I've been teaching science for 30 years, and in my first few years teaching science, 
I was afraid of spiders. And I had this one girl brought in a tarantula one day and I had to kind of act like, oh, that's really interesting. But on the inside, I was dying. Like, oh my God, I can't take this. I was really afraid of spiders like that guy in the chair. But one day I decided to go and take this spider class up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was a five day class on spiders. And I said, well, spiders are probably pretty interesting. I wanna go take that class. And when I did, it was a, an awakening in me. I learned that spiders are, are gentle creatures. They're not aggressive. There's all these beautiful kinds. They're really interesting. They're fun to go out and find. And all my fears went away when I learned the truth about spiders, okay? And that's the way it is with a lot of things in life. When we learn the truth about things, we get rid of myths, then we can see things how they really are. And most things are really, really cool. So now look at me, I love spiders. The guy that used to be afraid of them, I love spiders. And I want you to like spiders too, like my friend here holding this tarantula, because they're cool animals. And so this uh, little spider show is hopefully getting you to like spiders and give them a little love because they're really neat animals. So uh, well, why are they neat, Stadelli? Well, spiders are really gentle. They rarely bite. I've hardly ever been bitten by a spider. You only get bitten by a spider if you squish it. And if somebody squishes me, that's when I bite too. So you don't have to worry about spiders biting you. Here's a nice old gal and she was brave and she held the tarantula and she thought it was great. Spiders can be really, really pretty. Isn't this a beautifully patterned spider? I saw this outside of visitor center. And some spiders are really, really pretty. I am in love with this spider. Have you ever seen a prettier spider than this? Good night. Isn't that a beautiful spider? Wow. And this one, this is not a scientific fact, but I think you got to agree, this is a cute spider. Look at that little guy on my finger. He's not trying to bite me or anything. And look at those neat little markings. He's a cute spider. And so is this one. I found this one in my backyard, super cute. Man, I thought spiders were all these big, mean, brown, hairy things. No, 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 no. Now, most spiders that you're gonna find outside your houses, and you have spiders around your house, in the house, in the yard, everywhere in the world, there are spiders. That's lucky for us, because we like them. Most are pretty tiny. Some are pretty big. A lot of spiders have cool behaviors. I found this one in my school guarding all her babies. Isn't that neat? She has all these spines on her. It's a beautiful spider. Here's another picture of her. A lot of spiders are fun and interesting to study. And spiders are really important to the food chain and human survival. Without spiders, too many insects would damage all of our crops and spread disease. And I love bugs, but insects have to keep their numbers under control. And spiders are very important for that. Spiders are also food for other animals, so we need spiders. And so, like I say, they're human or they're important creatures and they need some human friends because too many people are afraid of spiders and they shouldn't be. So here is the way to get rid of your fear. Replace fear with curiosity because you can't be curious and scared at the same time. So if you're scared, you just say, well, I'm just gonna check out this spider and see what's going on. And then the fears will go away and you'll start noticing neat stuff about them and you'll learn to like them. And you can take it from my little buddy here, spiders are indeed super cool. So what is a spider? You know, what do you gotta have to be in the spider club? Well, first of all, you have to be an invertebrate, you know, animal without a backbone. And uh, you have to be in this group called arthropoda. And these are the jointed spy or jointed bodied animals. And this includes insects, spiders and crabs because they all have lots of joints and they have a hard outer skeleton made of this substance called chitin. And a specific group of arthropods here, a specific group of arthropods are the arachnids. And arachnid, arach is Greek for spider. And to be in the arachnid club, here's what you got to have. So I want you to check yourself right now because maybe you're an arachnid. Do you have four pairs of legs? No, you only have two pairs, your arms and your legs. Do you have two body divisions? Well, you could say you have sort of a head region and a, a body region. Zero antenna, well, you don't, have any, you don't have any antenna. And sucking mouth parts, well, I don't know if you have sucking mouth, you have chewers, you have chewing mouth parts. So you are not an arachnid, but this is what you have to have to be an arachnid. 
all four of those things. And you can see my buddy here that I'm holding on my hand. He's got those things, two body divisions, four pairs of legs or eight total, okay? And he doesn't have the antenna. These are not antenna. And he doesn't have any chewing mouth parts. So he's an arachnid. Now, is this guy an arachnid? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. What do you think? Arachnid, thumbs up. Nope, thumbs down. Count those legs. He's got only six legs. So he's not an arachnid. What about this one? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Is this an arachnid? No, sir. He's got antenna and he's got, doesn't have enough legs. Okay. Is this an arachnid? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Two divisions, eight legs. He's a, an arachnid. Now, there's a lot of other arachnids besides spiders. There's our friend, the harvestman here. And, you know, I hate to admit it, but this harvestman, I think, is missing a couple of legs. Sometimes they break off. But this is an arachnid. So just trust me on that one. Scorpions are arachnids. They have four pairs of legs and a few mouth parts. Here's one of my favorite arachnids, the pseudoscorpion, the false scorpion. They're so tiny that he's fitting on a penny. That's what this is. This is a penny. These are tiny, harmless little guys. They're super cool. Ticks are arachnids. Well, the next thing to learn about spiders, now that you guys are starting to get pretty good, is let's learn our spider anatomy. So we have our legs, and then we have the abdomen. And then this front part, you can call it the prosoma. Pro means first, soma means segment, the first segment. You could also call it the cephalothorax. It's the head and thorax fused together. And then you see these little tiny little things here? Those are called the palps, the palps. All right, so let's practice right now. Show me your walking legs. Walking legs, okay? And show me your abdomen. Here's our abdomen, and here's our prosoma. And let's make our palps. Here's our little palps. Wave your palps to me if you see me with your palps. These are your palps. And we use our palps to manipulate food and do all sorts of stuff, okay? Let's keep going on spider anatomy. Those are the little palps. Now eyes. Most spiders have eight eyes. Some have six, some have like only two. How many eyes do you see on this spider? Show me with your fingers how many eyes you see on this spider, or how many you think it has. Some people say six, some people are saying eight. This but one guy's very sharp, he's seeing only seven. You're right, I only see seven, but one of them's hidden, so he probably has eight. So most spiders have eight eyes. This is a crab spider, little tiny little eyes. Now look at this guy. This is a type of trapdoor spider and his eyes are all clustered together. He's got eight eyes all clustered together. So you can identify spiders by the way their eyes are spread out. Are they all over the place? Are they in a cluster? Are they different in size? So the eye pattern is really useful for identifying different kinds of spiders. That's one of the first things I look at. And here is one of my favorite kind of spiders. This one looks, I think he's the coolest spider because it looks like he's wearing sunglasses, doesn't he? This is a jumper. And jumping spiders always have their two front eyes are really big like a pair of sunglasses. So you can always recognize a jumper, okay? You can always recognize a jumper. And here is my friend, the lynx spider. He has six of his spiders like a hexagon and then he's got two in front. See that? Imagine if we connect the dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like a hexagon and then two little guys in front. Isn't that a cool eye pattern? All right, some more spider anatomy. On the back end of the abdomen are these little things sticking out. They look like exhaust pipes, right? Like from a car, but those are the spinnerets. That's where the silk comes out, the spinnerets. Where would your spinnerets be? Well, let me show you mine. My spinnerets will be right here on the back of my abdomen. There's my spinnerets, right? All right, let's review. Let's review. Walking legs, palps, prosoma, abdomen, spinnerets. You got it. You got it. You know, once you learn the anatomy of spiders, then you, you stop looking at them as scary things and you start identifying stuff. Couple more things. Below the eyes, here's mama's eyes. Below their eyes, she has these things. Some people call them the spider's hands, called the chelicerae. So make your chelicerae with your hands. And most spiders' chelicerae are going to go side to side. Tarantulas will go up and down, but 
Most spiders go side to side. And at the end of the chelicerae is the fang. They bite side to side. So tonight at your dinner table, you can go up to your potato or your hamburger and go side to side with your chelicerae and fangs, right? Go up to mom, right? Or you can be a tarantula and go up and down, up and down, all right? Those are the chelicerae. So here's a chelicerae on this spider. Here's his eyes. And you can see the long fangs on this guy, long fangs. All right. Now, how do spiders eat? They don't have chewing mouth parts. Well, they got to have a liquid diet. So this is what they do. Let's pretend my phone here was a bug. I go up and I bite it. And when it dies, then I come back and I'm gonna inject some digestive juices in there and liquefy all the insides of my prey. I'll wait a little bit, read the paper or something like that. And then when he's all liquefied, I'll come back and then I'll just suck it all up. It would be like you taking your food off the dinner plate and say, mom, dad, I'm gonna use a blender here, dump it all in a blender. And then you just go, you suck up your potato and your hamburger. That's the way it works with spiders, okay? Now, how can you tell a male spider from a female? Well, adult males, their palps are kind of swollen up like a couple of balloons or boxing gloves. See that? So that's how I know he's an adult male. So which of these two is the male? It's this dude. See those swollen palps? That's the male. And here's the female. Is this a male or a female? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's a male. You're right, because he's got the swollen palps. He's a male. Now, spiders don't like to hang out in their web in the daytime because birds and wasps will eat them. So they have a little hiding place, and it's called their retreat. And it might be in a little hole or underneath a leaf or something like that. When I want to get away from my wife, if she wants me to do the dishes, I hide in my retreat, OK? I have a little place that I go and I hide. I only come out at night. That way I don't have to do the dishes. So you retreat. Other things about spiders, they're all carnivores. You can't feed them lettuce and they all have venom, but they're not toxic to you. All spiders use silk, but they don't all build webs and they don't like to hang out with each other. They're solitary. Okay, so a lot of spiders are hunters. These spiders are all hunters and look at all the different colors, really pretty. They don't build a prey capture web, but others do. So when I'm out spidering, I pay attention to the web. Is it an orb web, a funnel web, a cobweb, a sheet web, or a woolly web, right? And here's a spider at night making her web. I went outside my yard and saw this. You can do that too. Here's another one outside my house. I love seeing these spider webs. Now that I like spiders, I love seeing their webs. And here's one wrapping up a cricket. They use silk for other purposes besides webs. Here's a wolf spider and she's made her egg sack out of silk. Here's the egg sack from a black widow. Here's the egg sack from this big, beautiful black and yellow argiope. Isn't that a cool egg sack? Really big, about the size of a quarter. Well, let's introduce you to some spiders that you'll find outside your house or in your neighborhood, okay? Everybody's got these in their yard or their garage or in their basement, the cellar spiders. They're harmless. See this kind of silk? This is a very common spider, the woolly spider. You can see it up here, it's tiny. And they make this kind of lace-like silk, very common on human objects, fences and garbage cans. Look around, I have one living on my car. Okay, he's on the rear view mirror of my car. You'll see these kind of dome-like webs and the spider upside down in them. Those are money spiders. And they're called that because people used to think if one of a money spider landed on you, you would get rich. How many people believe that? I do, I do. I'm just waiting for a spider to land on me so I can get in the box. Now, the most common kind of spiders you'll find around are the orb weavers. Here's an orb web. It's like a wheel or an archery target. And there's lots of them. This one's called Arrhenius. And these are called Argiopes. These are scientific names because most spiders don't have common names. 
just like dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, those are scientific names. Spiders have scientific names. Here's a cool one. I call it the bird turd spider because here is the spider and here he is. He's got this kind of funny shape and he's hanging out in a web with a bunch of old, you know, prey items and dead stuff. And it looks like a bird pooped in the web. And he can hide amongst that debris and the birds will come by and they'll think, oh, there's no spiders there to eat. While this guy is sitting there hiding, looking like a little piece of bird poop. Whatever works, buddy. Here's a spider you might find. You see the web and it looks like it's missing a pie slice. That's Zigiella. So pay attention to the webs. Here's one with big long chelicerae called the long-jawed spider. Here's one that a lot of people think's a black widow, but it's not. It's the false black widow. Here's a teeny tiny little guy. I find these all over. They're harmless and they're neat little patterns on them. Maybe you'll see one of these. See that little tubular retreat? These are the funnel web spiders. And then of course, the jumpers, look at those guys. Can you guys show me your jumpers, jumper eyes? There you go, this makes you a jumper. Yep, you're a jumper, you got the big sunglasses on, man. There's a jumper. And here's a crab spider, they kind of, they call this, they kind of walk side to side and they got long front legs. There's another crab spider. Here's a wolf spider. A lot of people are afraid of wolf spiders. I don't know why, they're harmless. You'll find them running around in the grass. Very, very common. Here's Mama Wolfie carrying her babies, carrying her egg sac. Here's some others. You'll find these inside your house, crawling around. They're harmless. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. And you'll find these in your yard. This is a non-native spider, and they like to eat roly-polies. This one makes a really good pet because you can always find food for them. Okay. And then if you go out hunting around for spiders, you'll find some really weird ones. See how tiny this guy is? Here he is zoomed in up close. This guy has evolved to look like an ant. Over, you know, many generations, they've evolved the characteristic to mimic ants, to look like ants. And look at this weird spider with this long pointy abdomen. He's an odd spider. He sneaks in other spiders' webs and he takes a little snack from the food, but he doesn't have to go and catch it. Pretty good deal. It's like sneaking in a picnic and stealing a cupcake or a cookie and then getting out of there. This guy's a little thief. Well, if you like spiders, here's my book that I wrote and you can find this on Amazon. And we're coming out with a new one of this in about a year with more pictures, spiders in your neighborhood. But if you like spiders, there's some other really good books. The Golden Guide to Spiders is really good. This is a fine book for spiders in the West Coast by Mr. Adams, okay? And then this one right here has got beautiful illustrations. So there's lots of good books for you to get on spiders. And everybody should have books on spiders. Read them before you go to bed and you'll have happy dreams. Now I'm out there collecting spiders and studying spiders. And so what do I use? Well. I'm always carrying a little jar, a little vial, or a hand lens or a loop. And I sometimes use a net or an umbrella. What do I use an umbrella for? Well, let me show you. I take this umbrella. I don't know if you can see me. Can you guys see me okay? I got my umbrella and I put this umbrella underneath a bush and I shake that bush. I shake that bush and all the spiders and bugs will fall down onto my umbrella and then I can look at them. And if I want to keep one for a little while, I can put it in a jar. And if I don't want any more, I just let them go. So they're really, really good. An old umbrella, okay? Don't use mom's silk umbrella from Paris. She won't like that, but an old umbrella will work. If you got a net, that would go, you work. Or a sheet you could put underneath, all right? And you can do some spider science around your yard because there's a lot that still needs to be known about spiders. So I need your help to go discover more stuff about spiders. So here are some of my students going out there collecting data about spiders. How high is their web and what kind of spiders are around here and what are they eating? We like to write down our data in our journal, right? recording numbers and making a map. You could make a map of your backyard and spot out 
put all the points where you find spiders. That would be a fun project to do. Drawing spiders, so much fun to do. I love drawing spiders. Here's one of my students drawing spiders. Here's a little guy I showed you early on. He's drawing the spider right here, making paintings. That's a great way to learn because to make a good drawing or a painting, you have to really observe and study the spider. That's the most important skill of a scientist is to be a good observer. And then going out at night. Yes, in the daytime, I'm asleep in my coffin. And then I open the coffin up like Dracula. And I come out and I go out at night and I look for spiders because a lot of spiders are active at night in their webs. You bring a flashlight out, it's really, really fun to do. You and mom and dad out there looking for spiders, you'll find lots of goodies. You'll find lots of goodies. You can see all, I have adults and kids who are out there, we're having a good time. Okay, and there's one of the ones we found. Now, a big rule for us spider people is we never put our hand where we can't see what's there. We don't put our hand underneath a board because maybe there could be a dangerous animal there, a black widow or a rattlesnake. And we don't want to disturb them. So I use a stick or I just peek under. I never put my hand somewhere where I can't see. We understand that rule. Is that a good rule? Thumbs up. You bet it is. This protects you and Spidey. And Pat, spiders, you have about five minutes. Okay, spider, I'm on my almost last slide. Spiders need some help, my friends. We, you have a job to do, and that's to educate others and dispel myths that spiders are cool and create a little habitat around your yard for spiders, right? Where the spiders gotta have some places to live and don't use those poisons and pesticides and herbicides, kill all the good bugs and kill the spiders. Oh, it's the last thing we wanna do and never pollute. Boy, if you can help spread this word, nature will really thank you, and I will too. So that's the end of the slideshow, my friends. So now what I want you to do is I want you, now don't leave, I want you to get out of your seat and get off the computer in a second, and I want you to go around your house, around the outside of the house, or the inside, or in your yard, and if you're going out, make sure mom or dad says it's okay. And I want you to go out there and look for some spiders. And you can catch some in a little jar, a little vial. I don't try to pick up the spider because then I'll end up squishing him. I don't want to do that. So I can just use my little jar and kind of scoop him up, something like that. Or you can take your camera. Almost everybody's got one of these cameras. Get mom or dad out there with you. You find the spider and say, all right, mom, get a good shot of that spider and they'll take photographs of it. Boy, it's fun. This is a great way to collect. You leave the spider alone and you take cool pictures. So I want, I want to see what spiders are living in your neighborhoods. So go take some pictures, go collect some spiders, look around on the bushes, look on the walls, look underneath stuff, check them out. Send me some pictures of spiders. So Margo, what are they going to do? They're going to send them to us and put them on a Google doc. What are we going to do? Uh, Carrie's going to tell them. She's sending out, she, she put it in the uh, chat of All where right. people could go to share their photos. Hi guys, I'm Carrie. Pat, that was amazing. I want to help you all get your photos onto Google Drive. So parents, if you can help your kids get the photos they take onto this drive, that would be the best thing I could ask you for. If you have any specific questions on how to do that, I'm going to remain here while everyone else goes and collects and I can walk you through the steps. So I'd like to release everyone into the world to take their photos. So go ahead, go take your photos. But if you have any questions, I'll be here and, and we can unmute you. Just raise your hand. When they come when back, Carrie. Oh, hold on, you hold on. Back. Everyone you come back. back. I was wrong. Pat wants your attention. Hey, when do they come back and show us their pictures and stuff? What's the plan for ending this? 10, 15 minutes. Okay, 10 or 15 minutes. Go find those spiders and send those pictures. And then we can have some few questions and answers and I'll say goodbye to you. Good luck. I see somebody ask, can you see my photo? I see one photo in the drive right now, but it doesn't have anyone's name on it. It's called image 5866. So uh -huh. Ricky, if that's, that's your mine. photo, I can see it. That's mine. <laughs> Who is saying it's mine? What's your name? Ricky. Perfect. Okay, so we can see yours. Thank you for uploading so quickly. Carrie, is there a way I can see these? Yeah, if you go click on the link that I just put in the chat, you'll be able to see what they're uploading. All right. 
Let's see the chat. Here we go. Boy, boy, a lot of stuff going on in the chat. We have a they have been so active. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Can I see the photo here? Let's see. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, what if I just spotted a spider web, but did, I'm not sure if I saw um, a spider. Is that okay? That's fine. It's great to take pictures of webs. And what you ought to do is go out at night and see if Spidey's in it. And Spidey will probably be in there at night. It's probably hiding in its retreat right now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I see this little spider here that somebody took. Image 5866. Yeah. It was I mine and it, it was in my trampoline. Oh, okay, Ricky. You got a little tiny little cobweb weaver. That's called Theridion. You see that little stripe down his abdomen? That's called Theridion. He's harmless little guy. They're cute. Good spotting and that's a good picture. I see two hands up, but I see that one of the people isn't even at their screen. So I think that's probably a leftover hand raised. <laughs> and then the other person, I don't see their screen on. So if you have your hand up and have a question, feel free and just talk. Um, yeah. So I'm just wondering, I, I have a lot, I have a couple of questions. So, um, one of them is like, like the, the spiders that go underground, how do they dig their holes? Like, oh, that's they a good question. use it Very from the So, uh, some of them have these uh, extra spines and stuff on their chelicerae or on their palps or, or near their chelicerae for digging. It's kind of like a little rake. And uh, so some of these trapdoor spiders, they can burrow down and, you know, a couple of feet or something like that. And you'll find little dirt near their opening. So, yeah, they have little adaptations for that. Good question. What was your second one? Uh, my second one is, it's so like, um, how do they make the silk for their web? Well, it's a liquid on the inside of the spider. They have special glands, which are these organs, kind of like your salivary glands or various glands that you have that make substances for you. They have these glands and it's a liquid on the inside. And then when it comes out of the spinneret, little things on the back, it's pulled out and they have different little openings on there for different kinds of silk for different purposes. Some silk is sticky, some is not sticky, some is used to cement pieces of silk together, all that. And when they pull it out and it comes in contact with the air, it turns from a liquid into this stretchy solid substance. Mm -hmm. Silk is a fascinating substance. But how does it go from liquid to a solid so fast without yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't think it is a chemical reaction. It's not a change in what it's made of. I think it has to do with the way the atoms are lined up being pulled and contact with the air somehow. So that's a good question. I don't know exactly the, the physics behind that. And um, so I just wanted to say that spiders also use their like silk for wrapping up food for later. So it, so yeah something doesn't eat it or yeah many purposes many purposes and are uh black widows dangerous because uh they they have enough venom they have a strong uh, venom very poisonous venom but uh there's very very few cases of deaths in the united states from people being bit by black widows um for, for nowadays you can get treatment for the bite and uh it usually is not enough to kill you. Now, kids gotta be careful because they're smaller. So I don't let any of my students collect black widows and I don't mess with them either. I respect them. I, I leave them alone. I, I like seeing them, they're fascinating animals, but I give them the respect uh, that they are due. But I, I am not afraid of them. I don't worry about them getting me like I used to. Now that I've learned the truth about them. All right, do we have another picture here? Let's see. So Pat, I yes, kind of wanted to wait until people get back to okay. share, okay. Um, just so they can get the benefit sure. from hearing about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, um, is this one little thing the way to uh, 
Do I just look in the chat for every picture? Is that what I do? No, so the Google Drive, they are uploading them right now. So oh, okay. somebody else just uploaded a new photo. And as they start coming back, I'm sure you'll get a whole bunch at once. And I, I get them in the chat um, or is there the, I just click on the link. Uh, it's in the link. So if you click on the link and you kind of keep it in a separate window, like I have one window for sharing at my screen. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so for Ricky's, so as more spiders come up, I'll click a side arrow or something and more, more pictures. Yeah, I, but there is one there and I don't see a side arrow. So if you can just like go back one, I don't know if you're allowed to go back one page, hit the back button. Yeah, I'm hitting that little guy. Nothing. How do you add pictures? Great question. Um, who is asking? Are you on the screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. So have you taken a photo and you'd like to add it now? Yeah. Did you take it with a smartphone or a camera? Uh, I, I already, um, so I sent it to the, so this laptop, so I copied the image. And it's on your computer now? Yeah. Okay. So you can go ahead and click on the link to the Google Drive and I'll go ahead and put it in the doc. I'll put it again in the chat. And if you click I, on there. I have it open the. Great. Now, if you go look at the left top, there's a button that says new with a plus sign. Do you see that? Uh, no. If you're in the, if you click on the link, it'll take you to a website. And the website says drive on the top left with a triangle. Do you see that? When you click on the link, it just comes up with the one picture. It doesn't show like an actual oh, no. Google Drive folder. Okay, yeah. let me go back. Maybe it just went straight to the folder. Let's try it again. Try this one and tell me if it works. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I apparently put the wrong link in. So the link that I put in that says, try this one, go there and you should see a button on the top left that yeah. says new with a plus sign. Yeah, add it. Great, and uh, then go to file upload, which is the second option. It's uh, not in files, it's I uh, copied the photo. It's not downloaded. So. I see. So the first thing to do is to somehow get your photo onto your computer. So download your photo from your email if you sent it to yourself and put the photo on your computer as a file. Then you can go to Google Drive, hit that plus sign new. And then, yeah, add file. And it'll pop up. You just select the one you want. And I see several people are figuring it out, but I know it's complicated. So feel free. I can repeat this stuff over and over if anyone wants a review. Wait, um, can I just do it on a Google Doc? So this is a Google file. Oh, if you want to put it on a Google Doc and then upload the doc, that's fine too. As long as you can get it in this folder. Okay. Um... Hey, Marco, so... can you remind me about timing? I've gotten so entranced with what's going on. I'm, I'm not paying attention to the timing. Um, we 15 minutes left. So we have now, we are at 2.40. So we've got another five minutes or so. And But but because people are sharing as we're going along, we probably could take a little bit more. Okay. So yes, you had more questions? You've got two people at the top that, are, that have their hands raised. Jinshan? Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself or type in the chat if you need to ask me how to upload your photo. So I'll be looking at the chat for questions or you can just unmute yourself. Forrest, I hear your dog. Forrest, I'm going to mute you. But if you need to ask a question, you can unmute yourself. It looks like you figured it out, actually. So you're fine. OK, Cassie asks, can I show a spider? We would ask that you put it in the Google Doc, the Google Drive folder, 
I'll put it in the chat one more time. It looks like the very first time it's I sent a link, it was the wrong one. one. So here is the right one. That's cool. I can't access the link because I'm on a school computer. Ah, uh, that makes sense. You can describe it to us. Describe uh, your spider. It has white fangs and red eyes. And um, I think it's a female because it, it doesn't have like the swollen, um, the swollen parts where they hold their fangs. I forgot what it's called. Palps? Doesn't have the swollen palps? Right, it doesn't have the swollen spider. How big is the spider? Um, Mom, where's my ruler? Can you look at my ruler, please? I caught a real spider. Oh my god, mm -hmm. Owen. Hang on, I'm gonna go get my ruler and I'll check. Anyone else have questions about uploading? Four centimeters. So I see two people with their hands raised. I see Jin Shan, you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Wave at the screen if you have a question, Jin Shan. Just wave like this if you have a question. Nope, guess not. Okay, and what about Anirud, do you have a question, Anirud? That person seems to have left <laughs> okay. his computer, her computer. Oh, it looks like Cassie says that their um, spider is four centimeters. Four centimeters, that's a pretty doggone big spider. Yeah. So it's a big one, are you sure it's four centimeters, not four millimeters, four centimeters. Do you have it with you? Let's see it. It's fake. Fake, nice try. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I fooled you. My brother, my brother, my nice brother caught try. a my brother caught a real daddy long legs. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's always a couple of snakes. I am on to you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh you found a daddy long legs or you found a cellar spider? Which one? Was it a spider? Uh, Not the, the harvestman. Yeah, that, that name Daddy Long Legs, it, it's applied to a spider, the, the cellar spider, and then they right. also call it for a harvestman. Right. Owen, Owen, bring it over here. I'll show it. Stop flicking the container. The spider won't like that. Bring it over here. Yeah, you let's see this fake show. spider you got here. I want to see, uh, you know, okay, a lot so of fake is, spiders. This, are... is, this is a real spider. Let's see. You can see? Uh, it's a little. Open, open up the lid and turn it. Uh, you can do that. Oh, come on. That's my <laughs> no, I, no. Oh, look at this gal, man. Oh, wait, she's, she was all ready to try to fool me, and now she's all afraid of that spider. She needs to rewatch that spider slideshow. He she needs threw more treatment. this at me, and I freaked out, OK? I have arachnophobia. Oh, God. He, he has it worse, though. Oh. Mom, do you want to do it? What was the point of this? Do you want to do you want to open the thing and show the spider? Because I'm going over here. Wow. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who's got a question? Mm, so, um, but I was gonna open. Do spiders come? In? Let me see. I I didn't hear the question. Uh, which season does the spider come in? Oh, in the house. Yeah. Well, you know, you can get spiders all year round. Uh, people notice spiders a little bit more in the fall. Um, hold on here. Cassie's got some tiny little guy. Oh, here, oh, lower that down a little bit. I almost got him. Lower that container down there, senor. Let's see. Um, you know, I don't, yeah, that could be a cellar spider. Yeah, I think so. Good identification. Yeah, that's a cellar spider. All right, let it go. Let it go in Cassie's room. She needs some uh, friends. Um, the uh, 
So the fall is when people notice spiders more because a lot of the females are pregnant then and they get really big. But uh, you'll find spiders throughout the spring, summer and fall in good numbers. Uh, the winter time is a little slim pickings. Uh, most spiders live about a year and uh, the ones that are kind of overwintering typically are probably the young ones that are, are hard to see and they're hunkering down underneath a leaf or a log or something like that. Um, some spiders will live more than a year and then tarantulas and trapdoor spiders can live many years. Thank you. Uh, now I got this picture on my screen here. I don't know if you guys can see it of Jasper's spider. Anybody see Jasper's spider on my screen? Wherever Jasper is. Looks like Jasper's got a wolf spider and he's got a roly poly and they're both arthropods. They have the exoskeleton and jointed body, but this is the arachnid. Four pairs of legs, two body divisions, no antenna. But that looks like a wolfie to me. Very common, wolf spiders in your grass and stuff. All right, we're getting near time, man. We need some, do we have any more pictures of spiders coming in? Let's see. I got a lot of other things coming in. There's the cellar spider right there. Somebody turn that one in. Nice cellar spider, very common. Many of them are non-native in your uh, houses. And I don't know how many more spider pictures I saw. I don't remember too many. Ooh, Looks like we have about oh, 10. this is the fake spider. I found this in my basement floor. I think it's a jumping female. Is this that fake one? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, you know. it's kind of weird. They wouldn't make a fake one with the arms sticking out like that. It's not a jumper because there's no sunglasses on it. Kind of hard to tell. Uh, that one. That one looks it like kind of looks like it because um, I didn't go really close, but um, I can see it. Like I, I, I saw the round eyes. You can kind of see them. Uh, not on this one. Jumper's got much bigger uh, uh, eyes than this one. Now, is this one taken in the sand? Is this another one of these? Sinan, is that your spider? Yeah. Did you take this picture? Or is this out of a book or something? Uh, no. Well, I, um, I found it uh, because I couldn't really go outside. Yeah. Um, Where's the picture from? On the on my basement floor, though. Floor, though. It's... Oh, looks like it's on the sand or something like that. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell on this one. Maybe some sort of crab spider. There are a few more, I think, in there now, Pat. Oh, got some more pictures? Yeah, someone, uh, uh, Anita uploaded her picture directly into the chat. I don't know if you can access it that way. Let's yeah, see. I'm going to upload it to the drive for her. Thanks, Carrie. All right. See, I have another picture here from somebody. So I have another cellar spider, but I think there's also a shed exoskeleton here called the Exuvia. Is that a bathtub? I don't know if I'm looking at a bathtub upside down or the corner of the Hello? Seat. Yes. Uh, that's my picture. Who's that? Forrest? Yes. Okay. Now, where are we looking here, Forrest? Uh, we are looking at a certain corner next to my front door mm -hmm. and as you can see there's another spider up there okay so these are that these are both arachnids i think this top one looks like the cellar spider and the bottom one looks like a harvestman or daddy long legs to me. yeah i have a lot of daddy long legs yeah. at my house i think that's what you have you have two different arachnids, one's a spider and one is in a different order of arachnids, opiliones, the harvestmen. Harvestmen don't have any poison, unlike spiders that have venom. Uh, harvestmen are kind of scavengers and uh, they have little stink glands for defense, but uh, no poison, they're completely harmless, all right? Any other pictures or or spider questions, bring them on. Wait, question in the chat, Patrick. What, question in the chat, aren't cellar spiders and daddy long legs the same with just different names? Okay, that, that name, daddy long legs, it's a common name and common names, there's no rules for common names. I could call myself daddy long legs, right? And so the name daddy long legs is often used for two different but similar looking creatures. And in fact, this picture is a good example. Um, a lot of people, let's see if I can get this picture back up here. 
A lot of people call seller spiders daddy long, daddy long legs, and a lot of people call harvestmen daddy long legs. So I don't even use that term anymore. I just call these guys seller spiders, and I call these harvestmen because there's that confusion of the names. Okay. That's why scientists use scientific names because there's only one scientific name for each guy. You can't have the same scientific name for two different guys. So Is there an easy way to distinguish between daddy, uh, harvestmen and uh, cellar spiders or daddy long legs? Very yes. Usually. Uh, the um, spiders there is a, a slender little waist between the abdomen and the prosoma, okay? Whereas in harvest men, there is no waist. They're kind of fused together, the abdomen and the prosoma. So no waist. So Pat, we're, we're getting real close to, to time here. Okay. Um, there's one more, there's a, there are probably a couple more in there, but one of our participants who put hers in the chat, Carrie has uploaded it. To where? To the Google Drive. All right, so I'm, I'm looking on the Google Drive. I only see these ones. Where is it, Carrie? There's actually about 10 there that you don't see. So maybe refresh your screen. Oh, OK. All right, good. That'd be fun to see some more. Never even thought about that. Uh, the one I uploaded says Anita. It's the third on your, the one on your right. All right, well, let's see Anita's spider here. But if you could do it in like 30 seconds, because we don't have much time. Yeah. Okay, Anita's got something. Uh, let's see. Uh oh. Alas, technology here. She's got a little silk under there, I can see, but uh, my computer is. Yeah, I'm not seeing the actual spider here. Let's see, is there any of these others? Here's a nice egg sack from probably Zigiella, maybe. And uh, a lot of, there's another cellar spider right here. I don't know if you guys can see those. A lot of cellar spiders. There's that wolfie. Yeah, a lot of cellar spiders. And let's open up Anita's here and see if we can see. So this is, uh, what is this? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Part of a lamp or something or a socket. She's got a lot of stray silk around. A little, Maybe perhaps a little egg sack. Who knows what's there? Got to wait at night. Come back at night. See if anybody shows up. Now Jasper's got a giant spider. You got to look out for Jasper. He's got this big spider that he's holding on there. Yeah, very good. Big fuzzy one. Pat, we only have one more minute left. And in that one minute, I want to thank you so very much. Okay. And Pat said that if you have other questions, he would be happy to have you email him. So Pat, could you put your email address into the chat for people to see? Oh, well, indeed. Happy to do and that. And you all found some great critters. I hope you had a, a good time both out there and learning from Pat. And I hope you, some of you aren't quite as concerned or scared of spiders as you used to be, and that you understand a little bit more about how, port, how important they are out in the world. So go out and tell your friends that they're really cool. They're not scary. That's, good. That's a good way to help our environment right there. We have a whole series of spring events coming up, and we hope to see you again soon. Um, for those of you who are in high school, there's one on nature and mindfulness that you might enjoy on April 19th. And then there's a, a whole citizen science project on April 30th that families can do all together on sudden oak death. So if you would go to our website, which is cei.sonoma.edu slash calendar, which I will put in the chat also, look at what we have coming up and register with us directly. And if you would like to go on our email list, would you please put, uh, put that in the chat as well? As, well, no, I guess we can't do that. Um, it's time to end. Okay. Got to cut off now. Okay. Bye. Email Good Patrick. spidering. Good spidering. <laughs>